Well, it's time for another face-off. This time we're going to be looking at slot 1 processors. We'll be looking at the Celeron chip, the Pentium 2 and the Pentium 3. Uh, two clock speeds, 333 megahertz and 500 megahertz. Uh, the Celeron we're going to be overclocking to 500, obviously. And uh, we'll see uh, how well they get along here. They uh, Basically, we're looking at the same processor cores. The only difference is, is Pentium 3 has got SSE and uh, 66 megahertz bus versus 100 megahertz bus. So let's find out which one of these processors uh, the results might be actually surprising to some. Not surprising to me. I haven't edited the video, but obviously I've ran the benchmark, so I kind of have a pretty good idea which one is the best one here. But uh, you might be surprised on that. <laughs> The platform I'm using for this test is the Soyo 6BA Plus 3 motherboard. This has the Intel 440BX chipset for memory slots, and this board can theoretically run a gig of RAM, and I have done it, but it's pretty tricky to get it there. For these tests, I'm running 128 megabytes of RAM. Uh, the BIOS settings are all default, and I'm running the Hercules Profit GeForce 3 video card for this as well. So there's way more video card here than would have been available back in 1999 and 2000 when these processors were around brand new and people were using them. So first off, let's take a look at the processors at 333 megahertz here. In Everest Unlimited here, which I was surprised ran on Windows 98 actually, I had never tested this program on Windows 98, and surprisingly enough you can see that the memory test on the Pentium 2 is actually slower than the Celeron, probably having something to do with the faster level 2 cache of the Celeron processor, the full speed on die uh, L2 cache of the Celeron. In 3D Mark 2000 you can see that the Pentium 2 and the Pentium 3 are scoring identical 3D marks while the Celeron is lagging behind the two. This is actually kind of surprising. I would have thought that the SSC advantage uh, would have been enough to tip the 3D marks above the Pentium 2 here, but that's not the case. I'm assuming 3D Mark 2000 uh, had optimization for SSE, but maybe not. But this is the benchmark that would have been around when these processors were new, so that's why I'm using this benchmark. You can see here in Everest Unlimited that the Pentium 2 and the Celeron score identical, but the Pentium 3 is edging both of them out which shouldn't really surprise you because it has SSE and that would be an advantage assuming Everest was optimized to take advantage of SSE and I believe it, well it should be anyway in real world gaming performance here with Quake 3 you can see that the three processors are scoring identical frames per second yeah we got a 0.3 uh, frame per second variance between the Celeron and the Pentium 3 here but it's within the statistical margin of error. They're all equal here, which is actually really surprising, given the fact that the Celeron scored less than the 3D marks benchmark. So the winner of the 333 megahertz challenge is not clear at all. These processors at 333 megahertz basically are identical. There's no real performance difference whatsoever between these. There might be a little bit here and there if we really get to some different kinds of programs, but frankly, nowadays, people are going to be using these vintage processors for gaming. There's really no point in testing office productivity of these things. I mean, you know, you can write a text document or a Word document just as easily on all three of them, so there's no, there's no real benefit uh, between, you know, Pentium 3 or over the Pentium 2 over the Celeron. It's, they're identical, 333 megahertz. So, let's go ahead and take a look at these processors at 500 megahertz. Celeron is scoring 859 CPU queen marks, while once again the Pentium 2 is scoring identical with 859 CPU queen marks. Pentium 3 shows a little bit of a boost over the Pentium 2 and the Celeron with 961 CPU queen marks. Pentium 3 is also edging out the Pentium 2 a little bit in the memory 
read speed, probably due to the SSE having a little bit of an impact on that. Now what's interesting here is the memory speed. You can see that the Celeron is actually outpacing the Pentium 3 in this test, probably due once again to its on-die level 2 cache running at full speed. Now granted, it's running at a quarter of the cache that the other two guys are using, but it's amazing how much that speed makes up for that lack of cache. 3D Mark 2000, you can see here yet again that the Pentium 3 is outpacing the other two by a healthy amount. The Celeron is not scoring too well in this 3D Mark test, but let's take a look at Quake 3 once again here for a real world gaming comparison here and see what that looks like. You can see that the Celeron is scoring 71.5 frames per second here. The Pentium 2 is only scoring 69.2 frames per second. And the Pentium 3 is right in the middle at 70.5, making the Celeron the winner in the Quake 3 test here. So now for shits and giggles, let's compare a Celeron 500A socket 370 chip and a slot kit adapter. This chip is running at 66 megahertz bus. And let's compare it to the Celeron 333 at 500 megahertz with a 100 megahertz bus and see how much of a performance hit that bus really had on the Celeron chip. You can see that the 100 megahertz bus is definitely helping out the seller on chip here. 2760 versus 2388. The 100 megahertz bus is definitely helping out on that. You can see that the memory score is getting hit too here a little bit, but it's not too terribly bad. When we take a look at the CPU Queen benchmark here, you can see that the Celeron, whether it's 66 megahertz or the 100 megahertz bus, it's scoring basically identical. So let's go ahead and take a look once again at real world gaming performance here with Quake 3. And you can see the Celeron chip at 66 megahertz only scored a measly 54.5 frames per second here. So there is a massive, massive improvement with that 100 megahertz bus. And this is why people like me, all of us old school overclockers, the Celeron processor, the Celeron 300A was the winner back then. Overclock this sucker to a 100 megahertz bus, and if you were lucky, maybe just a little tiny bit more, and you would have had a Pentium 3 equivalent processor for a third of the price. But you got to remember, these chips were like, you know, 100 bucks versus 300 bucks, 350, $400, $700 when the Pentium 3 first came out. As a matter of fact, this chip, uh, I pushed this thing to 500 megahertz. A lot of people push these to 450. They get the 300A version of this. I got the 333, but uh, you know when these when we were doing this stuff, 500 megahertz processes were not something Intel actually officially released at that time. They were only at 450s, and I'm not. I don't think that they were at. They hadn't released the Pentium 3 yet at that time either. So we were basically running Pentium 2s with 400 with the 500 megahertz. And they perform, as you can see, equal to basically a Pentium 3. And in Quake 3, in the case of Quake 3, this thing actually outperformed that Pentium 3 by a frame per second. So I think it's a pretty impressive little processor, and I'm glad that uh, I got to share that with you guys. And you can see that the, th the 66 megahertz bus, though, definitely had a major impact. Now, what's interesting is that where does that 66 megahertz bus become the bottleneck in Quake 3. That's kind of an interesting test. It'd be kind of interesting to, to play with because Intel made several different, you know, higher speed Celerons after that, even in the copper mine that ran at 66 megahertz bus. So it'd be kind of interesting to see um, if there's still actually a little bit of an improvement that that processor can push through that 66 megahertz bus, or if it's just like walled at like 400 50 megahertz or well 433 I guess it would be 433 466 but uh, you can see that at 333 megahertz the 66 megahertz bus is really not um, much of a limitation yet <clears throat> at least it seems like in this test so anyway I hope you guys like this test and uh, stay tuned after this video if you if you'd like to I've got a little sound demonstration for you for my uh, my uh, Yamaha sound card. This is the Yamaha XG YMF 724E-V and this is currently my favorite DOS gaming sound card. The MIDI sound capabilities of this card are just awesome. I'm going to 
give you a little demonstration with Descent gameplay here. And just listen to that MIDI soundtrack that this thing's able to produce.
man, this thing just sounds so incredibly good. Descent soundtrack is just incredibly awesome with this sound card. And I highly recommend if you can ever get your hands on one of these cards that are not terribly common nowadays. Definitely don't pass it up. If it's reasonable and you don't mind paying a couple bucks for it, go ahead and get yourself one of these because it's definitely an impressive sound card for a MIDI soundtrack on these old DOS game. Well, anyway, this is Wayback Tech signing off. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see you again right here next time on the Wayback Tech channel. Peace out, everybody.